What is up all of you awesome and amazing people on YouTube? Kuda Malloy here coming at you with another exciting video. Yes, in this one we're going to talk about athlete's foot. We're also going to talk about jock itch and we're also going to talk about armpit itch. All three of those things which can potentially be spread amongst themselves by improper sanitary things that a person might be doing. With that being said, please go to your doctor if you have any of these three things. It could be more than what you think it is, so always go to your doctor first. Let your doctor check you out, see what you need. It could be something as simple as just athlete's foot. You put a spray on for four weeks, done, you're good, never get it again, hopefully. But it could be something worse, so you never know. So anyways, with that being said, there is a subscribe button down there below if you want to be subscribed to this channel. And the reason why you do want to subscribe to this channel is because we're always doing great content like this. This is, after all, Cooter Malloy product reviews where we do review a lot of products. Those products do end up in the description section down there below, so check out the links in the description section. Also, if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's talk about the basics. Whether it's athlete's foot, jock itch, or armpit itch, basically, in most cases, it's caused by a warm, damp, moist environment. So you're not getting enough air to the space. It could be that you're wearing the same socks two days in a row. It could be that you're wearing the same underwear or the same shirt two days in a row. And basically that bacteria and that fungus just has a perfect breeding ground to grow. So not a good thing. In most cases, a lot of these powders, these sprays, these gels, pomades, that kind of thing, usually what will happen is within about two to two and a half to like three days, You'll notice that most of the itching or burning sensation is subsiding, but in most cases, the manufacturers of these products will recommend to continue to use them for four weeks, like anywhere between two to four weeks. And the reason why is because you want to make sure you kill off every last little one of those suckers that's stuck between your toes, in your junk, or in your armpit, because if you don't, they could potentially regrow and spread and multiply and then recontaminate the whole area. And then you got to start the process all over again. So go by the manufacturer's suggested directions for whatever product you use. Me personally, I tended to use this stuff, ah, sorry, which was a athlete's foot powder spray. I like this because the powder kept the area drier for longer, and then the spray was just ease of the ease of the application. Just spray it on. You didn't have to rub anything in or do whatever your body contact between the two toes or between your junk and your leg, let's say, or in your armpit, basically helped facilitate and apply the stuff a little more easier. The active ingredient in here is, what is that? Meconazole nitrate 2%. And then if you go ahead and read the directions, basically I'll let you take a screenshot of that if you wanted to get a screenshot of that. But basically, you want to use it for four weeks, and then you have to remember to pay special attention to spaces between your toes, etc. And then it says, wear well-fitting ventilated shoes. Change your shoes and socks at least one day daily. That's at least once daily. It's very, very important. So basically, what they're trying to tell you here is this manufacturer is trying to say that no matter what the situation is, whether it's athlete's foot, whether it's jock itch, or whether it's armpit itch, to change your clothes daily just so that you get a fresh, clean pair of clothes on. I think it's very important. Also, too, like what a lot of people tend to do is they tend to do their laundry once a week. So they'll throw everything into the laundry basket. Guess what? As long as you wash the clothes with some good detergent, you use them in your washing machine, whatever the case may be, you should be able to kill off the fungus, the bacteria, et cetera, that's in there. But if you took something out of the laundry basket and put it back on again, you might be respreading the fungus, the bacteria, et cetera. So always wear a fresh, clean pair of clothes. You get the idea. All right. With that being said, let's go into some tips or tricks. Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot is basically something that a person can pick up at the gym. Usually a lot of times more than not. What will happen is, is somebody will go into the shower, they're standing pools of shower, they're standing pools of water within the shower, which is a breeding ground for the bacteria and the fungus. You basically put your foot in those standing pools of water, you don't wash your feet, you don't dry them off properly, and guess what? Now that bacteria fungus has latched on to that area between your toes, and it grows, things get scary from there. So one tip or trick I like to do is I like to wear sandals in the shower, like some nice thick sandals. And the sandals basically elevate my feet off and out of that standing pool of water that may be in the shower. Another tip or trick is I usually turn the shower on first, 
let the water run, try to try to move the water around as best I can with my hand or whatever, just to wash out any of those standing pools of water that may, been in, that may have been in the shower, may have been a breeding ground for the bacteria, for that fungus to grow. So I try to wash that first. Then I'll go in there, stay on my sandals, wash myself off, use a lot of soap, do whatever I got to do. And then basically when I, when I almost perform about ready, I do the one legged stand, right? And I wash off this sandal. Then I do the other legged stand, wash off this sandal. Just make sure that I've washed my feet, gotten them clean, etc. When I come out of the shower, dry my feet as much as possible. Try to get them as dry as possible before I put my socks on. If it's a situation where I've, where I've somehow acquired athlete's foot, what I'll do is I'll make sure the area is completely dry first, right? Towel it down, make sure it's dry. Then I'll put the athlete's foot spray powder on to make sure it's actually the spray and the powder and the chemicals that are in here, right? That active ingredient that's in here actually has a chance to attack that bacteria and that fungus before I put my fresh, clean pair of socks on. Very important. Okay, jock itch. So you're at the gym, you're working out, you're touching a lot of weights and equipment, you're grabbing onto, you know, dumbbells and barbells and that kind of stuff you go to the bathroom you didn't wash your hands so now you touch your junk so basically whatever you touched on the equipment you've now touched your junk and you've spread it that way or that's one potential way of spreading it so always wash your hands before you touch your junk another thing is let's say you had athlete's foot and you're rubbing that area between your toes right you're trying to you're trying to scratch the itch between your toes and then you go and touch your junk you could be potentially be cross-contaminating the, the fungus and the bacteria between your toes and your junk. And if you want to get worse than that, you might touch your armpits without washing your hands and transfer the fungus and the bacteria from your toes to your junk to your armpits. It's happened before. I've seen people at the gym that are just red in the armpits, red on their toes. I would imagine they were red in their junk. They're wearing a towel, but they're just scratching all over the place because they didn't wash their hands between touching those areas, especially when they knew that they were contaminated. Or maybe you didn't know you were contaminated, but always a good reason to wash your hands. So very, very important. Okay, so with that being said, let's talk about the armpit area, right? So you have your body and then you have your arm or whatever. Your arm goes in there. Warm, damp environment. If you're a heavy sweater, you sweat profusely. Maybe you're at a job where you're constantly sweating. Bring a change of shirt. Hey, there's no fault for you changing your shirt halfway through the day. I think the people around you will probably appreciate it because you're minimizing the body odor, the BO, but also that gives you a chance to dry off your armpits, reapply some deodorant, reapply some kind of powder or spray for the armpit itch. Or if you went to your doctor and your doctor said, hey, you need to use this prescription cream or pomade or, or powder or whatever the case may be, it gives you a chance to just dry out the area, right? Maybe do it during your lunch break, like halfway in the day. Dry out the area, get it clean, apply whatever you need to apply to it, and you're good to go. In my case, this is just me personally. I'm no expert. I'm not claiming to be an expert. But in my case, I found that this athlete's foot powder spray stuff with this active ingredient, the meconazole nitrate 2%, I found that this one spray covered my feet my jock itch and also my armpit itch didn't have to do anything else beyond that. I did it for the full four weeks. Problem went away. Ever since then, I've been drying myself properly, using fresh, clean socks, underwear, shirts, changed once a day, etc. Sometimes I will change out my socks halfway through the day because I get sweaty feet. So just, to, just trying to prevent and avoid the athlete's foot as much as possible. You get the idea. So in my case, it definitely worked. Had to, happy to say I'm a success story in that respect. Anyways, remember, there is a subscribe button down there below. So make sure to subscribe to this channel. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. There are links in the description down below to some cool products that I found related to athlete's foot, jock itch, and also armpit itch, etc. Remember to go to your doctor. Go to your doctor if you do have a problem or if the problem and or if the problem persists for more than a week. If you've got the problem for more than a week, the itching isn't subsiding, the, the redness or whatever isn't going down, definitely go to your doctor because it could be something far worse than what you think it is or something worse than what athlete's foot, 
the bacteria, the funguses. So definitely go to your doctor, check that out. Anyways, with that being said, if you have any questions, post them down in the comment section down there below. I'll be happy to answer those comments or at least respond back to them. And who knows, your comment down below could turn into a future video. So with that being said, let's just do one final summary recap. If you want to fast forward through the whole video and just get to right here. Athlete's foot, jock itch, armpit itch. Most of the time, they're all, they're all caused by the same conditions. And the conditions are warm, damp environment where bacteria or fungus can grow. So a way to prevent that from happening in the first place is always try to dry out the areas from water. Let's say you took a shower, you ran through a puddle of water, whatever the case may be. Towel off, dry off as much as you can. Change your clothing at least once a day, in some cases even twice a day. If you feel like you're a heavy sweater, if you if you foot sweat a lot, or if you armpit sweat a lot, whatever the case may be, you might want to consider changing out your clothes like twice a day. Change them during lunch, halfway point, whatever the case may be, just make sure you're doing that. Towel off, dry off the area as much as possible. And then in the third case, if you do have to go to some kind of over-the-counter type of foot spray, powder spray, jock itch spray, whatever the case may be, make sure you check out, make sure it's from a good company, good reputable source, good good reputable manufacturing company, etc. In this case, the active ingredient was meconazole nitrate 2%. So it's very, very important. Try to avoid those damp, moist environments where bacteria and fungus can grow as much as possible. Try to dry out the area. Keep the area dry. That's so important. The reason why I do like the powder spray is because the powder, in my honest opinion, just helps keep the area drier for longer. So it helps mitigate or kind of reduce the amount of moisture that may be between the toes, between your junk and your leg, or between, let's say, your body and your arm as much as possible. At least that's, at least that's what I found. So anyways, with that being said, remember, subscribe down below. There is a like button if you like what you're seeing. I'm Cooter Malloy. Links to products will be down there in the description section, and I will catch you all on the next exciting video.